the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. With his faithful valet, Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure in the story, Reservoir for Murder. The Green Hornet strikes again. Okay, I'm a reporter from the Daily Sentinel. Here's my press card. Sure, only you get it. My insurance company says I can take all the risks I want and they'll pay all. So why should I worry? Where's the phone around here? Oh, the only ones in the construction shop. Never mind, buddy. You warned me. You did your duty. Hey, wait. I'm tired. Reporters wait for no man. I'm climbing that scaffold. I want to see this with my own eyes. They built this reservoir with knitting needles instead of tea squares. The Sentinel's going to hear about it. Hey, what's, the, what's happening to that scaffold? Sentinel, the whole production's going to cave in. Did you see that? Did I see it? Holy mackerel, the piece of gunk! Gangway, I gotta get that phone. Daily Sentinel, publisher's office. Hey, hey, this is Lowry. Where's the boss? Oh, what's the matter, Lowry? You sound excited. Where's the boss? Give me the boss. It's coming down around my ears. Jesus, is that Lowry? Yes, it's Lowry. I've got Lowry on the phone. Construction wreck at the reservoir. Have a rewrite man caught in. You got it? Got it. Okay, Lowry, you give it to the rewrite man. Okay, boss. Can you see what's going on? Sure, I have a ringside seat. I'm in the construction shack. I can see from the window. Okay, Mr. Reed. All set, Lowry. The rewrite man's listening. Go ahead. I'm about 200 yards away from the concrete wall. They've been showing up one section because it had a crack in it, but it isn't a crack anymore. Hold it, there goes another chunk. You hear that? Man, it's a lucky thing there wasn't any water in that reservoir yet. Half the people in Maple Valley be getting their feet wet up to their ears. The rest of the concrete seems to be okay, but that one section... Yeah, they're pulling the men away from it. Guess it's going to change. They're running like this. Looks like it's going to be more than one month before the governor dedicates the Maple Valley Reservoir Project after all. There'll be an investigation. Hold it. Here comes the big one. 150 tons of concrete. Going... Come on, right. Come. Well, flat turning on the front page. 
No wonder that concrete wall caved in. Holy mackerel, this girl is... Hey, let go of me. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's just... somebody bigger than you someday? Or was it a whole gang? Now, Casey, it was one guy with a ten-ton blackjack in his face. Well, well, so that's why you didn't come back to the office last night or phone in. Fighting, huh? Holy mackerel, what kind of a reception is this? So help me, boss, I got this while I was on the job. You did? Sure, I was checking over that reservoir after dark. And just when I find something good, blam, some monkey jumps me and sends me to dreamland. Didn't wake up till this morning. Then you found something good. What do you mean? What I said, boss. I found enough to prove that crash was no accident. Good crash. No crew. accident? No, sir. Not when the steel supports that are supposed to be embedded in that concrete are sort of halfway through. What? Yeah. Gosh, Mr. Reed, and the whole state is blaming Jeff Thorndike, saying that he's responsible. Oh, that concrete was deliberately weak. It was, boss. Well, Lowry, you're going back there. Miss Case, get a photographer to go back with Lowry and take pictures of that damage. Call the police. Whoa, whoa, whoa boss. Mm-mm. What? No dice. You'd be wasting your time. Don't be silly, Lowry. Why would it make a front page story that would scoop the town? Hold Miss Case, just a moment. Go on, Lowry. We'd be wasting our time. Why? Because those steel girders aren't there anymore. Go on. When I woke up, I started to look again. Boy, somebody cleared those girders out of there like Lewis took Bear. What good is a story without proof? Now, gentlemen, this way, please. Okay, Thorndike, keep your chin up. I'm glad you're here, Reed. It's good to have someone backing me up. Senator just got the axe out for me. Can't say I blame him. Caven wasn't your fault, Thorndike. Yes, I know the Senator was, was, but someday we'll prove it. I doubt uh, very much if you can prove that, Reed. Hello, Senator. Hello. You may go, Miss Barry. Yes, sir. Well, Thorndike, as engineer in charge of that construction job, you've managed to put me in the soup. There's only one way I can satisfy the public. You come right to the point. Did you bring along your resignation? I can't understand what went wrong. I'm not interested in alibis. I'm interested in results. You didn't get them. I understand. Here's my resignation. Now, just a minute. Yes? The rat deserts the sinking ship. Your bird's aimed at me, Reed. It is? I hit this department. I'm responsible for what happens. You're also responsible for the men under you. Yet you're making Thorndike the ghost. I'm right, putting the blame where it belongs. If you read the sentinel, there might be some doubt that what happened was Thorndike's fault. Poppycock. The story cooked up to make circulation. You know, Jim. Not from the sentinel, sir. There's no proof. Your reporter made that story up, and you believe him. I believe him, yes. But he didn't make it up. I know my reporter. And get this, Shevlin. The public has faith in the sentinel, too. There's no time for... Which is just what I said. You're yapping about the interest of the public. Well, get this, Shuffler. The Sentinel has a circulation that's almost as big as all the others combined. And this morning, after our story, our switchboard was flooded with phone calls. Phone calls about what? About the cave-in at the new reservoir. Shuffler, if you're interested in public opinion, you might be interested to know that the public does believe that story in the Sentinel. At least enough so that they don't blame Thorndike. Well, is, uh, is that true? If you want a record of their names and address... No, no, I don't doubt you. Uh, uh, Thorndike, this, uh, this puts a different complexion on things. Uh, Shevlin is always sensitive to public opinion, aren't you, Shevlin? Uh, Senator, do you, do you mean my resignation? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm not accepting it, Thorndike. There, uh, in the wastebasket. I don't know what to say. Never mind. Just go ahead and make sure the job is finished. And finished right. It'll be done right. I'm still puzzled about what I... Jeff, let's go. Can't you see the Senator wants to be alone to eat his own words? Goodbye, Shovelin. Next time, don't be too anxious to throw out a good work. Goodbye, Senator. It'll be done right. I'll make sure it's done right. Goodbye. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish that job. And when it's done, I'll make absolutely sure Thorndike loses his job. I'll make it positive. <laughs> Here, let's go. 
Why, why Jane, you fool? I don't want to be seen. You've heard Thorndyke is going ahead with the construction work. Yeah. Thorndyke is too good a man. If he keeps going, he'll end up with my job. Yeah. That puts it up to you, Bender. This time, I want a big accident, you understand. Big enough so that not even the Sentinel can keep Thorndyke in his job. I'll be finished with the construction in three weeks, Senator. The water will be piling up behind the dam. A whole lot of water, Senator. That's it, Bender. I think you understand. Yeah, I understand. If the water should break that retaining wall and flood the valley, there'd be a lot of damage. Thorndyke uh, couldn't explain that. Yeah, Senator. And besides, there wouldn't be any evidence. The water would wash away every sign. <laughs> okay, Senator, you can count on it. There's going to be a flood. During the following weeks, while the damage was being repaired and the dam completed, Ed Lowry made frequent trips to the Maple Valley construction job. And his reports back to the Sentinel were all the same. He saw no sign of trouble. But he wasn't the only one on watch. When darkness fell each night, a small man, inconspicuous and slight, prowled around the reservoir. That man was Cato, Britt Reed's Filipino valet. Yes, Mr. Britt. I observed Maple Valley Reservoir at night, as you direct. They weren't seen, Cato? No, sir. Back home in Philippines, I learned how to move silent, like younger cat. What did you find out, Cato? Is there anything wrong? Mm, no. Why do you say it that way? I'm not certain, Mr. Britt. But there's one man. I observed him at night. Act very strange. Strange? Nothing very definite. Only he acts like a man who doing wrong. A man named Bender. Bender, eh? Name is familiar? Yeah, well, he's the man who told Larry to stay away when that section of wall fell. I wonder. Yes? I wonder if he's the one who could have knocked Larry out that same night. Oh, it's possible, yes. You keep watching, Cato. Pretty soon that job will be completed. We don't want anything to happen. <laughs> done, men. Thanks for your work. The Maple Valley Reservoir is a project you can be proud of. Senator yeah. Sheffield, yeah. will you close the water pipes? It'll take about a week to get the water high enough in the reservoir to start using it. That's the way the weather is, Thorndike. It's raining up in the mountains. Until the reservoir fares. I just pressed this button? Yes. Thanks for letting me finish this job. Yes. Well, here comes some rain. You'll excuse me. I'll get to my car. Senator Shepard. Yes, what is it? Everything's set. This rain ought to speed it up, too. Look alert. Oh, there's nobody to hear. Just a couple of more days and it'll be Thorndyke's finish. He's riding high. It'll be his finish. It better be. It... <laughs> Side of the senator's car. Who are you? Excuse me. I'm very sorry. Mr. Britt, I come back to your apartment at once. I tell you what I hear. You don't know their plan? No, sir. This rain will fill up that reservoir pretty fast. That is true. The rain continues. I think... Kato, we've got to find out. Check the gas weapon and the hornet mask. It rained very hard, Mr. That doesn't matter. Rain or no rain, the green hornet's going out on the black beauty. A few minutes later, Britt Reed and his Filipino valet Cato stepped through a secret panel in Britt Reed's bedroom, then along a narrow passage built within the wall itself. Down narrow, creaking stairs that led around a corner and connected directly with another building on a little used dead-end side street. Seen from the street... This building looked deserted, empty like all the others. No one could guess that within its bleak walls stood the supercharged Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. 
Go ahead, Cato. We're going to find this man Bender. We'll get the answer. Cato flipped on the headlights. A photoelectric cell registered the beam, started a small electric motor. And silently, a huge section of apparently solid wall swiveled upward. The sleek black car rolled into the street, turned and headed north toward Maple Valley. And behind it, the wall once more dropped into place. Hey, what's the idea bumping into a guy this way? Stark enough to black out it? This is a gun in your ribs. Hey, what is this? A stick up? Who are you? That man. With a green hornet. Come with me, Bender. What do you want? Come with me. You're going to answer some questions. Than it is here in the city, Senator. Yes, Miss Darcy. I, uh, I won't need you anymore tonight. You can go. Yes, sir. Well, Senator, I'm going to have to get back to my office. Oh, yes, sir. What's the matter with Bender? He's supposed to call me on my private phone. The water should be pouring into the first of all. I want to know. I tried to get him myself. He isn't home. Private phone, that's it. Hello. Is this you, Bender? Hello, Shetland. Who is this? You were expecting a call from Bender, weren't you? Bender, what? This, uh, this number is private. You're making a mistake. Bender's right here. It's no mistake. I know all about it, Shevlin. About what? The Maple Valley Reservoir. I want $10,000. Who are you? This is the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? $10,000 and your scheme blows up right in your face. You can't bluff me. Not a bluff. Remember, I've got Bender here. It wouldn't be hard to get him to talk. Now make up your mind, Shevlin. Ten grand all right. have it. All right. At least I'm willing to talk to you about it. That's all right. Nice, and your apple cart may not be chipped over, huh? I'll meet you in the valley about a mile below the reservoir where Route 22 and Highway 16 split. I, uh, I know where. Tomorrow night at 11. Be there, Shevlin. Don't forget. <laughs> Call, yes? All set. Tomorrow night at 11. Where is Bender? You give him gas from gun, Mr. Bitt. He in his car, unconscious. What do we do between now and tomorrow night, please? You take care of Bender? No, oh, I keep him unconscious till then, yes. Good. I'll take the black duty and head back to town. I want to be at the Sentinel tomorrow. I'll meet you at 11 in the evening. Oh, where, where is meeting? The junction of Route 22 and State Highway 16 in the valley here, Cato. And take care of Bender. Casey? 5.30. Will you come along, Mr. Thorndyke, to Mr. Reed's office? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice guy, Thorndyke. I like him. I wonder if he'll get shoveled down. Yeah, I hope so. Somebody ought to. Yeah. <laughs> Still raining. All day and since yesterday. This rain has me a little worried, Reed. The Maple Valley Reservoir is... Don't be foolish, Thorndyke. You have men up there, haven't you? Well, yes, but if something unforeseen... Oh, forget it. Say, hey, Lowry. What is, boss? I've got to head for home. I uh, have an appointment tonight. Oh, will you and Miss Case keep Mr. Thorndyke from getting the jitters? <laughs> now that his work's done, he has plenty of time for worrying, so keep him <laughs> occupied. Uh, you might show him around the Sentinel. Perhaps he's never seen a great newspaper at work. Well, Mr. Thorndyke, you've seen everything from Listen, the Mr. Thunder. Thunder. Still raining. <laughs> Give up, Casey. The guy's hopeless. Here it is, 10.30 at night. Outside of eating dinner, we've been giving him a conductor tour of the Sentinel, and all he thinks about is the weather. I tell you, Casey, that... Re- oh, Mr. Thorndike, I've been calling you from Senator Shepard's office all evening. I couldn't get you, so I finally came over. Miss Darcy, what's the matter? Oh, I don't know exactly. A phone call came for the senator. It wasn't on his private line, so I took it. 
Mr. Thorndike, it, it was a man reminding the senator to be at the junction of Route 22 and Highway 6 here at 11 tonight. The junction in the valley? Yes, and to make $10,000. But the senator was gone already. I couldn't tell him. Oh, sister, calm down. You're all excited. Oh, why shouldn't I be? The, the man who called was a green horse. The Holy mackerel, this is a case for the police. The police? Sure, hold on the board, Casey. Tell Gunnigan to get set for a page one scoop. Eleven o'clock, huh? We may not make it by eleven, but we'll be there soon after. Come on, Thorndike. Money talks. Yes. Here. Yeah, here you are. Thanks. Two doctors count, but if it isn't all here... It's, it's there. Good. I told your secretary... What's it? My secretary? Yes, I called this evening. Just wanted to remind you. I got no answer on that phone. She doesn't know I mixed up in anything crooked. You ruined me. Oh, no, isn't that too bad? Now that I think of it, she was a little surprised. But that's your tough luck, Shevlin. I got the money in the car. The car. That was big, please. Get out of here. Get out. I will, Shovelin, but first... No, no, don't shoot me. Don't get right. Is this for you, Bunder? I'll just use my fist. Miss Cato, don't keep till the police arrive. Remind me to send this 10000 to the Red Cross, will you? Let's get to the black duty. But, Mr. Britt, I don't understand. I don't understand what, Cato? Even when police get here, even when they find those two, what good is that? It's not possible they prove they are criminals. Don't worry about that, Cato. But I do worry. How police know unless Senator or Senator talk? They not talk. I said don't worry. Let's go, Cato. <laughs> There's a car. It's Chevron's car. It must be him. How easy it's not. Let me in there first. <laughs> How about them lights, Lannery? Yeah, yeah, Lowry. Hey, the senator's out cold. I guess the hornet beat us to the punch. That's just right. He could be. What are you doing here? Uh, hello, Mr. Thorndike. I ain't doing nothing. Oh, uh, nothing. We come all the way out here into the valley to catch the green hornet, and what happened? Nothing. The hornet was here, Mr. He was here. What did you say? Uh, are we in the valley? Yeah. Right below the, below the Maple Valley Reservoir? Of course, Bender. How long's it been raining? Since yesterday, coming down in buckets. What's the matter with you, Bender? Oh, poor fellow must be out of his head. Yesterday. Since yesterday. 